Nestle girl, did you get into the season premiere of Iyana Van Zandt Fix My Life last night with Nefertiti Pew and Solo? Nessa, let me start off by saying, girl, you see it, my energy is back. I am so glad we got something else to talk about other than them stale ass basketball wives and love and hip hop. Y'all, since I added some more shows to the rotation, I'm feeling much better. And what I like about Iyana Van Zandt Fix My Life is that it gives us an opportunity opportunity to get a little bit of comedy, to talk about a little reality TV, and to talk about some real shit. Now, I want to say this before we get down in the review. I'm side-eyeing the hell out of Iyanla because anybody who watched Iyanla Van Zandt Fix My Life, you know that in the very beginning on a lot of the cases, she always come in and she say, listen, you know, I'm a minister, I'm a healer, I'm this, that, and the third. I'm not here to make TV. I'm here to help you do do your work to fix your life. But quiet as it's kept, honey, the fact that you even got Nephi and Solo back says to me that you are here to do TV and not just regular TV or TV like this, bitch, but reality TV like this, okay? I'm side-eyeing the hell out of you, Iyanla, because the first time Nephi and Solo was on there and Nephi was in her Uber talking about Glam Squad getting ready to go make TV, you got mad with her, right? But the fact that you bringing Nephi and Solo back, it just says to me that you here to make TV. Nevertheless, I'm gonna let it ride because it was a whole lot for us to learn from this episode. NASA good. let me tell you something, is it me? Or did y'all holler when Nephi said a little bit of attention make her wanna suck dick? Bitch, I died, honey. First of all, I died because I just ain't used to nobody at 38 years old talking like that. Secondly, bitch, I almost fell dead to the sofa because I could not believe she was sitting there in front of Miss V talking like that. Talking about, yeah, she got a nigga in California that checks her in the morning and make her smile and it make you want to suck dick. And Miss Iyana was like... <laughs> Baby, just a man telling you good morning and sending you a couple text messages make you want to suck dick. Yes, God. Yes, Missy, y'all, the bitch, when you ain't getting no attention at home. Listen, a man, uh, the, the male man saying, hello, miss, how you doing? Make you want to suck dick. Okay, bitch, I don't suck that for a whole lot less, but we ain't here to fix my life. Mine almost fixed, Miss V. I took some time off and got myself together. That's why I look as good and fabulous as I do. Nevertheless, honey, you go ahead and suck it, girl. You better suck it. You better hope you suck all his goddamn finances out of him because you're going to need it with all them damn kids you got. Okay. Um, I will say this, though. Nephi came with her, um, not her game face, but Nephi came around this time in the right state of mind. She knew the process and in my opinion, she was ready to go through the process. Miss Iyanla did not have to dig and pull and fight. Oh, excuse me, y'all. burp. That's that vodka and cranberry I had earlier this morning. Let me stir her up, honey. Stir it, bitch. Shit, I might be like Nephi. I might have an alcoholic problem. It's 11. No, no it ain't. It's Sunday. And while I'm making videos, y'all hoes down to the brunch drinking unlimited mimosa. So if I got a problem, your mammy got one too. Nevertheless, Nephi came through ready to do the work this time around. If you notice the difference between this episode and the last time they were on the show, Nephi was very open. She was honest. She didn't make Miss V have to pull it out of her. She was very in tune with what was going on with her. And for that, I commend Nephi. That was growth because that first episode when they were on there, it was horrible and it was like pulling teeth trying to get them to be open. I will say this. Um, I really feel bad for Nephi because Frankie them or Frankie being absent really messed them up. Like, you know, we all have issues, but I think the majority of us just have regular day-to-day -day people issues. Nephi them is messed up for real. And, you know, I, I believe there's some things that went on with Nephi them that we still don't know. 
um, cause she really got it going on. Um, Nephi made me holler when she said after the first fix my life, she had went to counseling and treatment and therapy and they were telling her that she was self-medicated. And Nephi was like, what? Self-medicated? What that mean? I don't take pills. I drink. Bitch, I died again. <laughs> I love ghetto, well, no, I don't love ghetto people. I love laughing at ghetto people. That shit was so funny because you could tell Nephi is having a breakdown and she's shutting down at the thought of being labeled as either having a condition, self-medicating. Anytime you use any of those medical terms with Nephi, she shuts down because she doesn't want to, you know, I guess it's a hard pill for anyone to swallow that they've got a condition or that they've been labeled or boxed in, especially when she's been in so many other boxes, prostitute, poor, whore, uh, ghetto, disenfranchised, public assistance. Like there's so many boxes. So I'm sure Nephi has navigated through this world. Like, bitch, I got enough boxes and checks and X's against me. I'm not trying to put myself in another box, but it's funny because all those other boxes are the boxes that don't matter. These mental health boxes are the boxes that she actually needs to identify with being in and needs to accept so she can get help and get out of. Um, speaking of Nephi being in, in denial about her diagnosis, I want to spend some time on this, y'all. Um, I get so frustrated because I have family members and friends that I talk to on the regular that will go to the doctor, this one friend in particular uh, that I talk to on the regular does this all the time, will go to the doctor. The doctor will tell them something is wrong with their body. Then they will sit on the phone with me and be like, yeah, the doctor said this, but he don't know my body. See, my body just different. And the last time, da 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 da. And I had a friend that had this, and her doctor told her this, that, and the third. Let me tell you something. Black people, projected people, people. Period. If your back, if when you went down to Florida State University and got your degree or whatever, if you went down to ICDC College and got your certificate and it's not in medical and when you walked across the stage you didn't have MD behind your name, shut the entire fuck up, okay? These people don't went to medical school, don't been in school for 50, 11 years and owe $500,000 in student loan debt and you think you know more than they do? How, Sway? How? Like, that that's just the sheer definition of crazy to me you go to the doctor the doctor tell you you got a condition and you tell yourself you don't have one what qualifies you to think that you know more than a trained medical professional i'm sorry if the man said you're bipolar you're bipolar okay you're bipolar and there's nothing wrong with that you've got a condition that you can't help I suffer with depression and I'm not gonna lie to you it took me a while to ex it did take me a while to accept it it did but then I realized I did not do anything wrong there are days that I wake up and I am not in control of my mind and that does not make me a bad person it doesn't make me crazy it just makes makes me have a disorder and that's all to it and now I can treat and I can manage it and I can conduct myself accordingly versus those days when I used to sit in the bed just for days on end not doing anything wondering what was wrong with me at least now I might still sit in the bed on days on end but I know what's going on. I know different mechanisms and tools I can help to get my brain snapped out of it. There's nothing wrong with you if you suffer from something that you cannot help. It ain't like you walking around with untreated chlamydia or gonorrhea or some shit like that. I mean, now that bitch, yeah, bitch, you deserve to be shamed because you need to keep your legs closed to marry men or to dirty men. But if you suffering with mental health and in the black community, y'all, 
I just don't understand. We are more willing to be labeled as a baby mama, as a hoe, as a crackhead, as poor, but you let somebody tell you you crazy or you crazy, maybe that's why people get offended, but you let somebody tell you you got mental illness, you got depression, you bipolar, and all of a sudden motherfuckers don't wanna take on these labels. But you have no problem taking on a label of being a baby mama with five kids. It would seem to me that accepting bipolar would be a hell of a lot easier than accepting a whole lot of that other shit around there that you accept. But that's just me. And that's the way my crazy, depressed, fucked up mind work. Um, nevertheless, like nephew, here's what I want to say to you about that medication. Because I have had people who suffer with depression who have told me do not allow the doctor to put you on antidepressants because it makes it worse. I will say this when I started taking my medication. You know, in the beginning, because it is, it is, it is, you know, calibrating and altering the chemistry of your brain. Yes, you do go through some ups and downs and some mood changes, but after your body gets used to the medication, you know, you level out. And then sometimes too, you have to go to your doctor and you have to get your medication fine tuned and adjusted, but you have to stick to the regimen and the plan. And moreover, you have to stick to the trained medical professional y'all. And that goes for that. That goes for diabetes. That goes for any ailment that you are going through. And I want to tell you something and if you don't trust the doctor that you're going to go get a second opinion from another doctor but let me assure you anybody in the range of my voice right now who can see this if you are self-medicating or you are doing something that is counter the doctor's orders you need to stop right now because bitch you don't know what the fuck you doing okay and that's just true tea um, Solo came down to Missy Yana Van Zandt with a whole nother swag. Let me tell y'all something. Solo is done with that lady. Let me tell you what Nephi and Solo going through right now. I think they're going through something we all go through. Whether you living in heaven or hell, it's your reality. It's where you're comfortable. You know how to do it. And I always live by this saying, the devil you know is better than the one you don't. And that goes for people and for life circumstances. Solo knows how to come home every day, play with them kids, ignore Nephi, fuss with Nephi, pay the bills, go to work, and do it all over again. He knows how to do that comfortably. He knows how to do that with his eyes closed. What Solo does not know how to do is live in his own place, go to Nephi, co-parent, give her child support money on the side, still live his life. That is scary, it's taxing, having to figure it out, it's hard, it's scary, you know what I'm saying? And so people end up getting stuck because you know what, I know how to do this. I know when I get home at 7.30, I'm gonna have to fuss with her for 30 minutes, play with my kids, I'm gonna go leave and drink a 40 with my homeboys, I'm gonna come back, she gonna be asleep, I'm gonna go to bed and do it all over again. And we get stuck in our routine of dysfunction because it is comfortable, it is our norm, and we know how to do it. I will say, this though solo is tired of her ass and i think a large part of the breakdown between solo and nephew is the fact that for so long solo was just quiet and let nephew run amok and he was just you know a lot of men do this with loud mouth ass women just shut up and let them have their way for the sake of things being easier and for the not fussing and for the sake of the kids and to just keep things calm and collected in the household Solo has been beat up so bad and he is so unhappy that he and he's come to grips with the fact that he don't want to be with her that he's now fighting back and she don't know this solo and it's making her unstable and she don't know what to do and she's always been loud and boisterous and aggressive and forceful and it's worked as it relates to getting Solo to do what it is she wants him to do. It's not working anymore. So she's getting louder and more aggressive and more angry and coupled with that bipolar and that drinking and she don't know what to do. Mama is coming unraveled. And because she comes from the streets, the only conflict resolution she knows is fighting, fussing, and fucking. Okay, the, th the, mo the three most danger dangerous Fs. Fighting, fussing, and fucking. And that's what she's doing and it's just self-destructive for the both of them. When Solo screamed he was free, that shit infuriated Nephi. And it infuriated her again because there were so many things in her life that she was not in control of, but Solo was the one thing that she could control and she can't anymore and she's losing her damn mind. And Iyanla almost lost her damn mind on Nephi and going back to making TV. When Nephi came out of that room and started screaming down at Solo and Niyanla about take her where she needs to go, I'm sorry. 
that shit came off to me like a producer went in that room and was like, you hear what's going on downstairs and amped her up to do that. And as much as Iyana screen, she ain't here to make TV. This whole episode was you, not Iyana. This whole episode was production making TV. It was good. It was real good, but it just felt, uh, something about it felt a little disingenuous and I'm just keeping it real. Um, day two. I say this going back to the making TV comment. Day one, after they had to the break down, and Yonder realized that she could not get the healing and get the fix. When she came back outside and started yelling at Solo retroactively about the whole a man is not gonna stand in front of me and call himself mass, call her massa, that whole diatribe she went on. Either they edited that out of sequence. Or Iyana looked at the call sheet and realized they had two more hours at that house and she had to go make TV. Because it just felt like you went, sat down, pondered that, then retroactively got upset. It would seem to me that the moment that you would have went off and been infuriated about him calling her massa was when he was doing it or when y'all was outside and he didn't want to look at you and was smoking a cigarette. You sat down for God knows however long, ate lunch, used the bathroom, talked on the phone, smoked a cigarette. Then you came out to the pool and out of nowhere you went from zero to 60 fussing at him. It was just weird. But day two, Iyanla came in that Christian had them beat that Christian Balenciaga. Shout out to the makeup artist, my friend Christian Balenciaga had them beat that face. And Christian loved putting them damn colorful eyeshadows on the people's eyes. Um, Iyanla came in and she said, listen, <laughs> I can't help you crazy niggas. <laughs> Iyanla told them what I've been trying to tell her for the longest. You is not a mental health professional and half know what the hell you in there doing, Miss Iyanla. Iyanla said, bitch, when I went down to Europa University and got my degree in life coaching, the people ain't told me nothing about mental health or substance abuse and addiction. I cannot help you. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna wave my flag, okay? I cannot help you and you can't even help yourself because you is not in control of your mind. You need to go down and get to the nearest <laughs> mental health professional and we ain't got no more budget money to help y'all ass go. Listen, I really wanted Iyana to like get down deep into some more fixes. At the very end of the day, I don't know what the takeaway was from this episode other than we need to get a divorce and move the hell out. You know what I'm saying? They're really, for me, there was no tangible takeaways. Now, you know, if I have to find some takeaways, it'll be, you know, this episode, the follow-up episode made me realize that sometimes it just doesn't work out. Sometimes you have to know when to hold and when to fold. You know, those are things that I take away, but I had to deduce those on my own. The episode did not give me any tangible takeaways, and that's fine. Like, what I do like about Iyanla is that she has no problem letting you know there's just some things I can't fix. Some of y'all need to get y'all life before I can fix it, or at least get in control of your life before you can fix it. And that's what she did for Nephi and Solo. Um, you know, if anything, I will say the purpose that she served was helping them verbalize to one another. You're not a bad person. I'm not a bad person. We just don't need to be together. Let's get a divorce. Let's just do it. And I do like that part at the end where she made them both apologize to one another. Because at the very end of the day, friendships, relationships, family relationships, in my opinion, when you're, you know, bumping heads and fussing with people, listen, it ain't even got to be all this hate. We just don't work together in this configuration. And that is okay. It's perfectly okay. The marriage didn't last. Doesn't mean it's failed. It just ran its course. That's all. And so, you know, Nephi and Solo, I really do want them to go their separate ways. Now, Missy Yala told Nephi ass on day two, right? Told her, bitch, you need to prepare to take care of them kids without Solo and accept the fact that you got mental issues. And she told Nephi, uh, absolutely right. Y'all fix my life, had it going on, honey. Missy Yala said she wasn't here to make TV, but that's exactly what the hell she made. And I was here for it. Y'all welcome in Yala Banzan, fix my life to the funky bunch. And we gonna have, that give us a reason to have weekend and Sunday videos. Yes, God, honey, look at, look at God. The voodoo priestess don't bless us. Oh, he but a she, but thank you. At any rate, Nessa girl, I gotta get in here and go to a birthday brunch. I'll call you later. Bye.